We've taken a look at what was going on domestically uh, in the United States during uh, the Great Depression. We want to shift our focus uh, in this second half to looking at what was going on in Europe uh, and what was eventually going to draw us into World War II. Uh, if you remember from talking about the end of World War I, we said that uh, the Versailles Treaty uh, really did more harm than good. Uh, when it came to uh, establishing a lasting peace after World War I. Many of the penalties put on Germany uh, after that war are going to send them into an economic tailspin. And one of the things that you see becoming attractive uh, to folks in those situations uh, is the idea of fascism. And so World War II is often referred to as a war against fascism. Both Italy and Germany uh, during World War II are fascist regimes. Uh, they're not the only ones in the world. There was a fascist regime in Spain that will actually last uh, a lot longer than World War II does. Uh, fascism usually today is considered to be dead. There aren't fascist countries. Uh, and it's more of a word you hear thrown around uh, between political opponents uh, will accuse uh, each other of being fascist. Uh, so let's take a look and see what, uh, what this term actually uh, means. It was a form of government following World War I. It's going to start in Italy. Uh, and so uh, the two men that you see in the picture there, you have on the left Benito Mussolini, who's going to be the uh, Italian leader during the first part of World War II. Uh, and then Adolf Hitler would be the leader of Germany. Fascism has a couple of uh, different kind of hallmarks in looking at, uh, in, in trying to describe what it is. Fascism, first of all, and foremost, is extremely nationalistic. Uh, they want all the focus and devotion of the individual to go to the state. Uh, and so all of, uh, they, they don't, you know, it's not like communism. You don't necessarily have a, a, a you know an embargo or a, a, a lack of religion, but they want the religious devotion really of these people to go to uh, the nation. Uh, a lot of people with fascism advocated something called total war, which meant that uh, kind of your your state was going to uh, win glory. Uh, and increase strength through war. You had to be at war all the time, and every part of uh, your populace had to be uh, had to be going to war. So the line really blurs between uh, civilian and soldier uh, in fascism. Uh, the power in a fascist government is uh, controlled by one individual, uh, and that uh, individual is a dictator. Uh, in Italy, it would be Mussolini uh, as Hitler uh, gains more power in Germany. He becomes the, the fascist leader of Germany. So uh, just one person, right, who is controlling everything in Italy. Uh, before World War II, they would say the state is Mussolini and Mussolini is the state. Uh, and so uh, really you, you've got one authoritarian leader who's going to be calling the shots. You also have what are called third position economics. Uh, and, and there are some different economic systems, right? We have a capitalist system here in the United States. Uh, obviously, we've uh, seen the communist uh, economic system uh, take root in the Soviet Union uh, after um, the Russian Revolution following uh, or during World War I. Uh, and in communism, uh, what's going to happen is there's no private property. Uh, the state owns everything. And so... Uh, the state is supposed to evenly distribute uh, what is owned uh, kind of among the masses with no regard to class. Now, that's different than socialism. In socialism, uh, usually what happens is you can have some private property ownership, uh, but most of the public services are owned by the state. Uh, and so that means the country would control things um, that, that everybody used. Uh, and they're supposed to do it for, uh, the, uh, for everyone's benefit. There are classes in socialism, uh, so there is some uh, room for distinction between people based on merit, uh, which makes it a little different than communism. Uh, but in fascism, uh, you, 
the ownership of private property uh, and private business is allowed, uh, but it is in accordance with the government's wishes. And so basically you can have your own business, but it has to serve the higher purpose of the government. And so the lines between those two uh, really uh, start to blur uh, between those two. But it was, it's something called third position uh, economics. Uh, I told you that the roots of this are going to come from World War One, uh, and will eventually go into World War Two. On the left is a picture of Hitler uh, in World War One. Uh, on the right, Benito Mussolini. Uh, and like I said, after the war is over with, uh, what's going to happen is both of these countries are in vulnerable positions, especially economically. They have low uh, employment numbers. Uh, inflation start to rise. Uh, and so they are ripe for this type of takeover. Uh, now, the problem is uh, fascism uh, doesn't like communism. And so we see a conflict uh, that will spring up. Now, originally, at the beginning of the war, Hitler signs a deal with this guy. His name's Joseph Stalin. He'll be the leader of Russia or Soviet Union during World War II. But... Um, the idea in communism is that everybody's equal, whereas the idea in fascism is all the power is with one man. Now, if you examine the regime uh, of Stalin in uh, World War II, it might look uh, a little more fascist, at least in the way he was able to dominate um, with, with his power. Uh, they are similar in that there are uh, undesirables uh, in both of these. There are people that uh, they don't want to include uh, in either one of these societies. Um, you know, for instance, you know, we, we know obviously during the Holocaust that uh, Hitler and the, the Nazi regime will kill over 6 million Jews. What you may not know is that Stalin himself kills 12 million of his own people. Uh, being a Jew in uh, the Soviet Union wasn't much safer uh, than being a Jew in Nazi Germany. Uh, the differences between the two, like I said, are ownership of businesses. You can't have private business ownership and fascism. Um, and class. Um, you don't have any class in communism, so there's no different classes of people. Fascism is built on this idea that there are elite people, uh, that they need to be running things. And so it is a very stringent class system uh, that's going to be there in fascism. Uh, like I said, that is... Um, just kind of a brief explanation of what this is. What you really need to know uh, is the idea that in a fascist government, all the devotion is supposed to go to your country and that they're controlled by one uh, very powerful individual. Uh, and so uh, because of this idea that they're going for the glory of the nation and the only way the nation can get glory is through success in war, uh, that makes them a threat uh, to other countries around them. Uh, like I said, will eventually lead to uh, what we know now as World War II.